start formality checking and counting. But by the time votes were being counted in WA, the voice had already been defeated. It was an overwhelming rejection of the proposal put forward by Anthony Albanese. It was not a rejection of reconciliation. Whilst there is disappointment, there is shedding of tears, there is a moment to reflect, but then come together. Just two of our 15 federal electorates voted yes, Perth and the teal seat of Curtin. I think that people in my electorate just could see that it was it was high return and low risk and um, and we you know did our best to get that messaging out there. Critics laying part of the blame for WA's resounding no on the state government's botched Aboriginal cultural heritage laws, backed and then scrapped by Roger Cook. The Premier does need to take some responsibility for this. The timing of the round over the WA heritage laws could not have been worse for the yes case. The lack of detail also a key concern. Despite cultural heritage, our Prime Minister was still unable to provide the details that the broader population wanted. We're more divided now than we were a year ago and that sits squarely on the Prime Minister. If it had been two questions, then I'm sure the recognition question would have been passed. Premier Roger Cook didn't front the media today, instead posting on social media, calling the referendum a difficult campaign and urging everyone to look to the future. I think he botched it and he knows he botched it. The focus now on a united way forward. Forming partnerships with Indigenous people at the community level and at the regional level because that's where change will happen. What I think the Australian people want us to do, whether they voted yes or no, is to work across the parliament to make sure we do have policies that do close the gap. Sarah Smith, Nine News. Just two of WA's 15 federal electorates had a majority supporting the voice to parliament. Here's Sarah Smith again with how your suburb voted. More than 1.3 million people voted in WA and at 63.4% our total no percentage was ahead of the national vote and the third highest in the country. The Yes campaign had wins in two electorates, Perth and also in the teal seat of Curtin. Like other states, the no vote increased the further we move away from the city. The massive Liberal held remote electorates of Durack and O'Connor, both recording no votes above 70%. Opposition also strong in the Liberal division of Canning. In the metro area, Fremantle was close, with 53% saying no. But it was a clear no in a number of electorates across the metro area. The seats of Cowan, Haslark, Pearce and Moore, all recording more than 60% of voters against the voice proposal. The sorrow and soul-searching is now underway in the Yes camp. Despite the loss, an emotional Prime Minister today declared it's not the end of the road for reconciliation. An Indigenous flag flies at half-mast today after more than half the country said no last night. I'm sad. A lot of work has gone into this. A night of tears for those who wanted change. Forlorn faces at the Yes reception early in the evening. And as the polls closed in the West, the Prime Minister closed the campaign. While tonight's result is not one that I had hoped for, I absolutely respect the decision of the Australian people. That decision conclusive and comprehensive. Tonight, the Electoral Commission has the national result at 60.54% to no, 39.46% yes. A margin of more than 2.8 million votes and with postals still to come, that will likely increase. They've said no to grievance uh, and, and, and the push from activists to suggest that we are a racist country when we are absolutely not a racist country. This is not the end of reconciliation. The referendum defeated in every state, almost 7 in 10 Queenslanders voting no, more than 64% in South Australia, 63% in WA, 60% in the Northern Territory, 59% in New South Wales and Tasmania. Victoria was closer but hardly close. Only the ACT returning a yes majority. This is the referendum that Australia did not need to have. The opposition leader victorious last night, but today a feeling of solace over celebration. I feel a sense of relief for the country.
because I think we would have changed as a country and not for the better. Corporate partners, premiers, prime ministers, celebrities and song. All upstaged by millions in the suburbs and the regions. And we were not able to reach you and cut through what has been the single largest misinformation campaign that this country has ever seen. No referendum has ever succeeded without bipartisan support and no one had a larger impact than Senator Jacinta Nampajimpa Price. We have to step away from grievance. Um, attempting to bring about change through grievance has evidently got us nowhere. At a pub in Hobart, they watched and wondered what now. The same issues are still here today as what was yesterday and they'll be still here on Monday. Education, health... All these issues. The first thing we have to do now, we need to come together in unity. From the government's point of view, obviously, uh, that is now our focus. Uh, the Australian people have asked us to do this in a different way. Um, we hear that and we'll do that. And finding that different way begins this week when Parliament returns here in Canberra. So this moment of disagreement does not define us and it will not divide us. We will carry on and we will move forward and we will thrive. The referendum defeated. Tonight, there seems little appetite to do it again anytime soon. Charles Croucher, Nine News. Anthony Albanese has fulfilled his election night pledge to hold this referendum, but the Prime Minister and his judgment have emerged scathed. In contrast, Peter Dutton and the opposition will return here buoyed by the result. As for Australians, well, for the vast majority, cost of living remains the number one issue. And unlike Brits after Brexit or Americans after Donald Trump, this vote won't define a generation. At Christmas gatherings this year, it's far more likely the discussion will be about how to put food on the table and not how people around it voted in October.